Like, it's funny, I know, I know even less about Kirby than I did about Zelda. Like, I at least knew about most of like, like the big games of like the Zelda stuff. I know dick for anything about Kirby. I couldn't name you, aside from the one that just came out, a name of any of the Kirby games. That's how little I know about Kirby. Okay, here we go. We're gonna look up some dank lore. It's very important. I didn't literally start typing Kirby lore. Kirby series explained in six minutes. Perfect. Kirby. He's yeah. pink. He's round. He makes lots of sound, but apparently that wasn't good enough for some people. And so a convoluted lore had to be built. What What the hell? Is this real? Or is this just like this always sunny in Philadelphia meme? The lore had to be built. Let's start at the beginning. On a planet called Popstar, in the yeah. land of sunshine and rainbows, uh, all the creatures live in fear <laughs> of a giant tyrannical penguin who's stolen all the food on Dreamland. Okay. That is, until one pink puff suddenly shows up in town, starts eating all of his minions, gives DDD a big old punch in the gullet, and they've been best friends ever since. <laughs> what? But King DDD isn't Kirby's only rival. There's also Meta Knight, who yeah. started an entire war against Dreamland, Literally Look just at him. because the residents were being too lazy. But he's also a Zombie Barry, think of the tier two, thirty seven man. offer a sword to Kirby before every fight, even if his airship is currently plummeting down into the ocean. What? So yeah. You may have noticed that the bad guys so far aren't necessarily bad guys. Yay! That's because the true villains of the Kirby series are the eldritch horror eyeball monsters we met along the way. Let me break it down for you. There's Nebula, who is a smaller slice of dark matter, who is a smaller slice of Zero, who is later reincarnated as Zero Two. Not not the anime girl. Ah. Basically, they all have giant eyeballs, can possess people, and look like something straight out of a creepypasta. Well, besides Gooey, who is also a slice of dark matter that somehow became a good guy, thanks to Kirby's immaculate vibes. On top of the <laughs> eyeball squad, Kirby also has to battle a whole slew of intergalactic threats. Like yeah. Marks and Magalore, who on oh, two yeah, separate I remember, occasions I remember, I remember both the, treat Yeah, th this thing from the Sm uh, Smash Ultimate. Who on two separate occasions both treat Kirby into handing over some kind of magical artifact that granted them the power of a god. Oh. Then there's President Haltman and his secretary, who travel around in a UFO mechanizing entire planets, including possibly the entire planet Earth. There's Sectonia, the queen who spent so much time looking into a mirror that she turned into a bee. Crew what? Of completely original characters from the mirror dimension. Rats. And last but not least, Nightmare. Nobody really knows what his deal is, but he likes to hang out in the Fountain of Dreams. And honestly, can't blame him, the music there is pretty tight. So you might be thinking to yourself, with all these powerful enemies, how does one single gumball compete? Well, with the power of friendship, of course. What? And by power of friendship, I mean being the reincarnated form of a god. Let's get into the backstory. So the creator of the Kirby universe is this god slash being slash source of all life called Void. Almost nothing is known about it, except that when it comes across high amounts of positive or negative emotions, it reincarnates itself into a physical form, with the former being an all-powerful being determined to spread happiness and love, and the latter being an all-powerful <laughs> <laughs> the other just being a giant eyeball. <laughs> what? So sometime in the distant past, Void, whatever it is, must have come across some overwhelmingly negative emotions. Like bum, maybe bum, from bum. the YouTube comment section or something. And reincarnated itself into a planet-destroying monster called Void Termina. Meanwhile, there was also a super advanced society called the Ancients. Yeah, super original name I know. <laughs> who were split up into two different factions. There were the Sciency Ancients, who yeah? created the structure for super powerful weapons, and the Magicy Ancients, who imbued oh. them with magic. Hey, with it's the creations one. such as a clock that can grant any wish, or a spaceship that can travel across time and dimensions. Okay, I'm already lost, by the way. <laughs> Why is there so much shit happening? Why are these here? Well, the Ancients eventually caught wind of Void Termina and sent four heroes after it who sealed it away in a crystal prison called guys? the Jamba Heart. With one of the four heroes being a dude named Galactonite, who was super powerful. Oh, that's literally one of Meta Knight's alternate skins. That was... 
That, oh, that wasn't the same character? It's somebody else? Even the ancients were afraid of him. And they could, like, bend reality to their will. So the magic-y ancients sealed Galactonite away for all of eternity. Oh. And then the science-y ancients were like, okay, hold on. They just sealed away Galactonite, who sealed away Voitermina. So these guys must be super duper strong. Oh. And so the entire magic race of ancients were banished from their civilization, which obviously made them pretty upset. So yeah. they started making plans to resurrect Voitermina and enact their revenge on humanity. Dude, this is more convoluted than fucking Kingdom Hearts. What the hell? Thousands of years later, their plan succeeds. Unfortunately, this is where Kirby steps into the picture and yeah. killing gods is ah. kind of his whole thing where are all the characters at the current point in the timeline well Magalore built an amusement park and was thus forgiven for his crimes of trying to take over the entire universe. Marx survived the nuclear explosion caused by Nova and was also forgiven for his crimes against the universe. Susie took over the Haltman Company and is probably still mechanizing planets. Yeah. Black Knight keeps breaking out of his unbreakable crystal prison and ah. having epic showdowns with Meta Knight and I guess is now fused with a butterfly. Is this canon? I don't know. Shadow Kirby is protecting the mirror dimension. Sectonia is super dead and her ex-boyfriend Taranza is is now looking for love. Void Termina was purged of all negative emotions by Kirby and was possibly reborn as a new Kirby or Kirby-like creature. I don't know. Please don't ask me about Void Termina. It's confused. What am I even looking at, dude? Is that the eyeball? Gooey is having an existential crisis. Gooey just looks like a Dragon Quest slime ripoff with a bigger tongue. Adeline and Ribbon, I really didn't talk about, but Crystal Shards is a great game and I support the strange gumball fairy love story. Oh, and that's what? it. Hopefully this video can serve as a good introduction into the Kirby series. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more, then subscribe and- Yeah, go, go subscribe to him. Local gumball defeats God more at 11. What? My response to that is what? <laughs> What? The top one is very good. Okay. Attempting to explain all of Kirby lore in a single video. Go in a time before pink puffs and air rides, there lived the ancients, an entire civilization completely shrouded in mystery. Save yeah. for a few key relics they left behind. There's that but thing who again. who cares about any of that? Because yeah. on an unrelated planet far, far away, there lived an innocent pink puff named Kirby, a being of unlimited power who usually Mark, likes I think to spend his months. days eating, sleeping, or some <laughs> variation of the two. However, so this would all change when a certain self-proclaimed monarch would steal all the food in Dreamland, initiating a rivalry that would be sure to last an eternity, or at least when they felt like it. As while King Dedede would be the first antagonist in the Kirby timeline, he'd soon transition into less of an actual villain and more of an ally slash punching bag for Kirby to wail on really? just about every game in the series. Yeah. Since whether it be Dedede trying to prevent Kirby from releasing an actual <laughs> nightmare demon, or just being possessed by an otherworldly force, this king never seems to catch a break. Though speaking of possession, that brings us to our first real piece of Kirby lore, Dark Matter. First revealing itself in Kirby's Dreamland 2, Dark Matter is an amorphous dark entity, more often than not taking the form of a black sphere with an eye in the center. If anything, the most sinister thing about Dark Matter is the fact that it could possess whoever it wanted to do its will, including and usually limited to King DDD. However, while the first appearance of Dark Matter was more of a lone force, attacking Dreamland solely because it was lonely and had no friends, Wait, what? Three, it friends was just lonely? Actually, unlike the lone Dark Matter that had attacked before, Zero comes much closer to completing its mission, with the planet becoming fairly engulfed before Kirby put a stop to it. But <laughs> how exactly did he put a stop to it? Well, let he me explain, him. because yes, this is important. Essentially, Dark Matter in general, alongside being made up of well, dark matter, are beings of concentrated negative energy and emotions, making their only real weakness the opposite of that, positive emotions. He's Maybe. just so However, happy. However, that being said, the enemies not can't all take dark it. matter are necessarily evil. Take Gooey, for example, a member of dark matter that somehow broke away from Zero's control altogether and formed Meh. a will of its own. How did this okay. happen? Well, we'll just have to go into that this later. This is a little easier to follow. we got a lot to cover. Next up, after Zero was seen 
seemingly brutally annihilated on ah! Popstar, a similar force That's began kind of to up, attack actually. and the, iris the planet, is fucking much like a certain out. orb. Now, I won't give you a complete summary of Kirby 64, since aside from dark matter possessing some familiar faces and the mysterious ruins on Rockstar, there really isn't that much to unpack in the beginning. Instead, it's towards the end of the game that things really start taking a turn for the dark when Kirby arrives at the fifth planet in the game, Shiverstar. Because I mean, it kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Plus, hey, I guess this cause Wait, I mean- Wait, is it? Oh. No, oh, yeah, it is. It, plus, hey, I guess this kind of explains where Adeline came from, or at least her ancestors. Though moving on to the Who's corrupted that? Ripple Star, after defeating Miracle Matter and expunging the planet of all dark matter, the dark star reveals itself with a familiar face at its core. But hold up a minute, wasn't Zero destroyed in Kirby's Dreamland 3? Well... Kinda. In the case of 64, it's heavily implied Zero was revived using the body that was cast away towards the end of its first fight. So after yet another mildly disturbing battle in a oh game for kids- Why is there so much to this? Why isn't it just like big eat new evil thingy? It's here at being evil and mean to all the little goofers. And then Kirby's like, I'm just gonna eat you. Why is it like- Well, obviously, this thing must have come from the body that was left behind when it transformed to that one phase of the boss fight in the last game. And like, what? Really? What? Why? At least, so taking a step back from Dark Matter, let's talk Kirby Superstar. Hey, now, there's that game wise, people keep talking about. Isn't that much to be had here, what with most of the sub-games being standalone stories, like Dinah Blade or Revenge of Meta Knight, where yeah. Meta Knight attempts Bernie's to start like, an actual war just to get Dreamland's inhabitants to be less lazy. But undoubtedly, aside from those, the most important sub-game within the game is Milky Way Wishes, where Kirby is tricked by the scheming jester Marks into summoning Galactic. Galactic Nova, a mysterious clockwork star of then unknown origin. This thing's fucking see, weird once looking. Once Nova is summoned by someone, it has the power to grant one wish, no matter how small or large. So in Dragon turn, Ball? after Marx got the sun and moon to fight each other in order to trick Kirby, literally all it took was him jumping in- Huh? What? Go back. What? After Marx got the sun and moon to fight each other in order to trick Kirby, literally all it- What? What? What is it? What? After- Mark's got the sun and the moon to fight each other to trick Kirby. About what? And also why? What does that even mean? Trick Kirby to what? All it took was him jumping in to say his wish first to turn the seemingly harmless machine into a force of mass destruction, with it taking the might of both the sun and the moon to stop its advance. Though of course, even with all that said, <laughs> and they the together. both of them never stood a chance against the seemingly bottomless pit of power that is Kirby. This was the most fucked up, but honestly, not, it's, not the, it's not the Cthulhu eyeball thing. This thing it would give me fucking nightmares look at this shit look it's like his fucking face is all fucked up and then something goes in there and blows it up the look at this bottomless pit of power that uh, is uh, like look 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 brain is exploding defeated them in no time at all but it it's doesn't like, end Jesus there Christ, because 12 dude. years later kirby superstar would be remade into look a happy superstar old oh my god he's back and he stays I actually think I like the other one better. I think I like that one better. This was funnier. He looks so fat. <laughs> I think I like that the way that Kirby looks better. He's got a little hat on. He looks so happy. He's like, yeah! He's so fat. Super, simply put, with Superstar Ultra came the beginning of one of Hal's favorite new ways to sneak in lore where you'd least expect it. Pause screen descriptions. Ah, and while they wouldn't there it exact, is. but pause screens aside, most importantly, with Superstar Ultra came four completely new sub games on top of the original seven. What there the was fuck? Revenge of the King, a direct sequel to the very first game in the series, Helper to Hero. Of Wait, so there are games within the game? Is that what, is this like some Mario All-Star shit? What in the fuck am I even looking at? Samurai Kirby? Was that like the Samurai spinoff? True Arena, the Battle Royale Kirby, Meta Nightmare Ultra. This seems like the joke that like where Dongaropa was like, hey, Dongaropa, Revenge of Kameda, Monokuma Strikes Back. True Arena, an even harder version of the normal arena, and the star of the show, Meta Nightmare Ultra, where for the very first time, you get to play as the infamous knight himself. Now, Meta Meta Nightmare Ultra is a bit of a tricky case, since technically the events that take place in it aren't exactly canon. Instead, they're more of a oh, what-if no. scenario, where the events that take place
take place within the modes flesh out certain aspects of the lore while never canonically taking place within the main story. Case in point, Galactonite, the final boss of the mode and strongest warrior in the galaxy. What the fuck? This guy's like fucking Sephiroth, basically? He's like stuck in the planet's like crystal juices or some shit? The true arena also falls under this category as well, serving as a what-if scenario with the conception of Mark's soul. A stronger version of Mark's who, after surviving the explosion of Nova, absorbed its power to get revenge on Kirby. And as great oh, as all yeah, that is, the... by far the most important aspect of this is Smash his fight. new pause screen description, as it contains some pretty heavy foreshadowing. To quote, he absorbed a Nova's power to bring back his evil soul. Yeah, that should, I think that probably should have given me an indication. Like, so that light, that fight is in Smash Brothers. And I was like, this shit's weird. But I, I kind of thought it was like they made it weird for the game, like for Smash. Seemingly, it's just literally that that guy back again. It's like fucking nightmare fuel. Like, I'm like, this isn't a Kirby game? It's a Novas instead of the Novas. While there is a chance it could be a translation error. Cons oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're, gonna, we're, we're talking about translation errors of like, does it mean a uh or the? Really? Though we'll get to that later, because next up on the Jesus chopping block is Christ. Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, an incredibly important game in terms of lore. As How many Kirby games are there again? A lot? 36 games? We the count remakes, of actually. Land, including That's Mirror World lot, Counter. Bro. One day, after sensing a dark force emanating from the mirror, Meta Knight took action to stop the evil at its source, diving directly into the Mirror World. So he's a good guy now. Meta Knight's just a good guy. He was bad, but now he's good. Kind of like DD. He just good? He, he good guy? He friend? Okay. We arrive at Kirby's Squeak Squad. At first, this game oh seems God. to have another pretty self-contained story. What with Kirby chasing after a piece of stolen cake what? that is another pretty self- <laughs> He's so, he's so, he's just gonna eat it. He, he's got his little nubbins holding his big knife and his big fork. He gotta eat a, a big old slice of cake. But oh no, oh no, it's gone. No. Fucking Kirby grabs his gun and he's fucking gonna lay waste. Fucking eat the shit out of you that a gang of thieves known as the squeak squad stole from him however as the game progresses made and kirby the very angry on the treasure they assumed would grant infinite power it turns out they'd get more what than the they bargained for oh oh that's his nose okay i was like the first thing i saw was i saw his eye there and i thought that that nose was his other eye and it was bulging out of his face <laughs> leader I was like, ah! Roach being possessed by dark nebula a member of dark matter that had been sealed away in a forgotten era left alone for eons and much like the rest of its kind dark nebula would be no match for kirby being absolutely decimated by the triple star so now with all those bits and pieces of lore out of the way but did he get his cake back that's the real question did he get the cake back did he get the cake back? We'll never know. He did? Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, this whole game apparently started because he lot he got his cake stolen. And dude, I would have been pissed as fuck. <laughs> he was just like, I just want to eat my cake. And then he goes on a giant like 40 hour adventure. And then he got his cake. Good. For the next massive truckload of lore in the form of We're a little conniving alien who crash lands on Dreamland. Enter ah. Maglor, the main villain of Kirby's return to Dreamland, who solely through dialogue reveals a lot of important stuff. But before anything else, let's talk about the Ancients. First referred to as such by Maglor, the Ancients. <laughs> <laughs> the lore. <laughs> is he talking about the, the Kirby lore? The lore is a legendary. <laughs> In this game, our lore is called the lore. <laughs> and star allies when the lore in lore star cutter is revealed to mean paradise no i don't believe it, it means lore the kirby lore is called lore he also mentions something very worthy to note alongside yeah. the lore star cutter the ancients were also responsible for a plethora of other amazing relics of untold power with clockwork stars and items that bring Wait. dreams see it looks a little cuter doesn't look quite as like 
Nightmare Fuley is the other one we were looking at. stars and items that bring dreams to life being two references he gives. Off the bat, that connects quite a ha! few thoughts. Plus, on a side note, when you meet certain conditions on the extra mode for Return to Dreamland, Maglor mentions he actually came to Dreamland already knowing about Kirby, with someone he knows very well having fought with Kirby in the past. Based on these implications and some other information found in later games, this mysterious figure is most likely marks from Superstar, essentially confirming that he survived the explosion of Nova. So fast forward a bit. But does anyone ever die in these games? It's, it's, I'm starting to think this is just like Kingdom Hearts. Nobody actually dies. The story, and once Maglor ever. tricks Kirby into defeating Landia for the master crown it protects, he immediately puts it on the first chance he gets, activating the crown they and do transforming die. into a much more sinister form. It's more sinister? Transforming I think he put a, a wig on. Sinister form. He's just really big. He's got big hands. Is he have cat ears? Intending to conquer the entire universe with his newfound power. However, like those That's who seek the relics of untold power before him, Maglor wasn't exactly aware of the Master Crown's true nature. And as his battle with Kirby progressed, uh -oh. the crown began to show certain traits. The crown is like li a living that weird present thing. Before when it was under Landia's nullifying effect on it. Maybe it's the sudden appearance of an eye on the front of the crown, or maybe it's the uh -oh. fact that it's clearly gone from a crown to an irremovable headpiece. But whatever it is, there's no Shook. doubt that the crown itself is Ugh. sentient, and rather than Maglor utilizing its powers, it's the master crown itself I like utilizing wiggles. Maglor. Just take the third phase of his fight, where after Maglor fails to Metroid? defeat Kirby, even with the power of the master crown, the crown takes things into its own hands, what completely reforming Maglor into a projection of itself, all but confirming the origin of the master crown's power with a certain characteristic that that sometimes appears within Maglor's mouth. All in all, Maglor definitely learned never to play with the powers of literal dark gods ever again, and went on to take He's up the okay, more he died. positive venture. Oh, wait, never mind. So, he yeah. went on to go talk more about Kirby lore. A, a group of six floating islands that Kirby <laughs> finds him heading to the scenic heights of... <laughs> okay, this is funny. Look at Kirby's Floralia, face. A group of... <laughs> this is me right now listening to this lore. Is that face right there. <laughs> The dimension mirror from Amazing Mirror appears, forcing DDD to fight the mirror world version of himself, Shadow DDD. And what that's the not hell? all either, because after defeating Shadow DDD, the king <laughs> actually enters the mirror. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so my head did what, what my head does when I'm like, like this is what happens when my, like my brain can't start to comprehend things. I just start ad libbing to my own dumb lord here. <laughs> So here's, here's my lore. Here we go. Ready? Here's forcing DDD to fight the mirror world version of himself, Shadow DDD. And that's not all either, because after defeating Shadow DDD, Shadow DDD also looked in the mirror and saw a shadow version of himself. So then Shadow DDD also had to fight Super Shadow DDD. But that's not all. Boy, the fucking mirror came back again after he was dead. Fucking Shadow DDD and Super Shadow DDD fused together to become Ultra Shadow <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. That's like, is that where this is going? The king actually enters the mirror itself to reveal ah! an even edgier dark edgier. Hungry for revenge. But what does this all, all even black mean? All black Meta Knight. I like it. They thought we need a darker version of Meta Knight. They're like, isn't he already though? And they're like, no, we got to go darker. Okay. How much darker? I guess we'll just lower his saturation and put on some really bright blood red shoes. Perfect self with his hatred. So in turn, once Sectonia got the mirror from Tyranza, Give him a gun. Yeah, to change a... her the more nah, she like gave into at. it. Soon, dissatisfied with her current form, she'd use magic to make herself more beautiful, resulting in the wasp-like appearance you see her with in the game Wait, to you make thought... herself more I'm sorry. At what dis... point? Why did you think this was a... like, you're already like Hawaii is fuck and you got funny little horns and shit. You're like, nah, fam, nah. It's not good enough. I gotta transform into the like the least liked fucking insect on the planet. Let me go and turn to a Satisfied fucking wasp or a yellow jacket. Where the hell is he supposed to be? Yeah, that's great. In the wasp-like appearance you see her with in the game. And once she gazed into the mirror enough, just about every shred of her former self had vanished, being replaced by an endless hunger. <laughs> long after the events of Triple Deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> just to make me laugh dude king dd is like all right i need you to make a castle for me i mean i need you to make the castle look evil so i want you to give us some really angry eyes 
But they're also gonna be my window. <laughs> Triple the luck. <laughs> Meanwhile, Didi's over playing fucking chess with a it's a wallaby, right? I haven't gotten an answer to this yet either. Who are the fuck are the waddledies? Are they his minions? Are they deities dudes or something? Who the fuck are these guys? They're his subjects. Okay, are they like are they equivalent of toads in the toad kingdom? Are they all like they all work for King Deity? Are they evil or are they just they just there? Servants. Okay. Go oh, Goombas. Okay. Goombas. Okay. Like I like this is how much of a basic bitch yeah. I, I don't even like I don't even know who the fuck these things are. <laughs> it's like, I think this guy's not ready for how like much of like a fucking noob I am at this shit. It's like expecting someone to go in like they're talking about Mario lore and they're like, okay, but, but who the fuck's Mario? What? Who's Mario? The guy with an M on his, oh, fuck. Oh, of course. Okay, keep going. All right. Wait, who's the toad? What? Who's the toad? The guy with the mushroom. Why do they call him toad? I, I don't know why uh, that's just his name. I know, but is he, is it his name or is it a race of characters? Um, wait, what's, what's princess peach's name? What it's, it's in the name. No, what's her name? What's her real name? That can't be her real name. That's stupid. Why wouldn't they call uh Mario soup plumber, tomato man or something? That's like the equivalent of that. Who calls their daughter fucking Peach? And then, and then, and then the person in leaves. Peace. It's inhabitants living out their lives as they always have. When suddenly, out of nowhere, the sky was blotted out by something immense and oh. spirit. I was like, it, it got blotted out by Meta Knight. He's evil again. I was like, well, no, no, he's, he's just sleeping. In shape. Except instead of that sphere being made up of a matter <laughs> most dark, this one was an immense spacecraft called the Access Arc, home of the Hulk. Look at Kirby, dude. Kirby's just trying to, he's just trying to live his most life, dark. dude. He's just trying to fucking live his life and weird shit keeps happening to him. Look at this just little fat little gumball. He's just like, I just want to sit here and sleep. But all this weird, dank horse shit happens to me on a daily basis. I can't escape it. This one was an immense spacecraft called the Access Arc, home of the what Holtman the? Works Company, a company infamous across the galaxy for mechanizing entire planets and harvesting their natural resources. So in turn, while Kirby was sleeping under a tree, King Dedede and Meta Knight watched on in horror as Planet Popstar was completely overwhelmed within a matter <laughs> of minutes. Any retaliations... Oh, like, proving yeah. to be futile. Get him, guys. Shoot cannons at this fucking space creature. Ah, we're gonna get him. Any oh, fuck it. Get eviscerated. <laughs> ah. Kirby retaliates against the access arc, destroying each of its five legs. Why is everything a light bulb? Bedded into the planet. He meets the executive secretary of the company, Susie. And okay, so, I remember this one from the other video. So. <laughs> Secondary. Reveal all that much during her conversations with Kirby. She does mention a certain mother computer that will become extremely important in a bit. Because mother. once Kirby destroys all five legs and enters the access arc, he meets President Haltman, the supposed mastermind behind the invasion of Popstar and all the planets before it. After smugly introducing himself to Kirby, he reveals what is up. The, this shoe's like feels sort of meta and it, like meta commentary of like the commercialization of the planet. Planet. <laughs> this big executive like business corporation guy comes in with his ginormous ship made of money fucking ass blasts these little pathetic peasants makes bills walmart and like fucks over all the small businesses it kind of is by yet again piecing together the information spread across countless pause screens throughout the game yes. long before the events of the main story the haltman works company Wait. was simply a robotics company led by max prophet haltman alongside his then young daughter susanna nicknamed susie at some point in their travels across space as we already his daughter? No, they came across the blueprints for a powerful wish granting supercomputer and <laughs> Look at Kirby. Look, no, at, look at this little look at this little powerful. dopey asshole just looking up at the look up to the sky like God, what the fuck's happening? <laughs> Does Kirby even know what's going on? Does he look at him? He's just like, I'm just gonna go out and do things and I'm gonna beat up the guys that get in my way. La, 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 la. It's like I'm corporate America, I'm here to fuck over your your little suburb here, Kirby, and he's like, ah! with the power of friendship. <laughs> no, 
No, I don't get it. There's a very deep topical discussion to be had here about taxes and the wealthy upper class besmirching the fucking lower class. And I don't care about that. All I care about is eating cake. Yay! Meanwhile, Haltman was testing Stardream's space-time transport program. There was a terrible accident warping the young Susie into Bryce, another thank dimension. You. Thankfully, Susie would survive the ordeal and eventually return to her father as an adult. However, to her dismay, Haltman would not be the same man she remembered him as. You see, when the accident occurred, Haltman believed his daughter had been killed in the process and stricken with grief began to become obsessed with completing Stardream in order to bring her back. What? That's super dark. Dark. <laughs> he believed his daughter was fucking dead and it made him lose his mind. So he became obsessed with getting power to bring her back from the motherfucking afterlife. Unfortunately, though, due to Star Dream and its mental interface not being complete, Haltman began to lose both his compassion and memory of his daughter, changing the goal of his company from her revival to infinite prosperity. It'd also be at this point that Haltman would begin mechanizing planets and harvesting their resources. As in the business plan drafted by Stardream, it was the most effective way to maintain eternal prosperity for the company. However, by this point, Haltman still wasn't completely gone, and once he laid eyes on Susie for the first time in years, he sensed a faint familiarity with her, in turn making her his executive assistant. Going back to the climax of the main story now... What? Where did she go? I'm confused. Wait, she left. She was gone, came back, and he, after he'd already lost his fucking mind in another dimension. So then she came back, and she's like, hey, dad, how's it going? And he's like, you seem familiar. I'm going to hire you as my secretary. This shit's fucked up, dude. After seeing what her father had become, in order to teach him a lesson, Susie had been making preparations to steal Stardream and sell it off to any startup company that wanted it. Unfortunately, yeah? unbeknownst to anyone, after analyzing the universe through the Haltman Works Company and being exposed to the deranged Haltman's desire to mechanize everything, Stardream had developed an extreme hatred for all forms of life. So, as a result, once Susie interrupted the startup process of Stardream, the computer took to absorbing all that was left of Haltman's memories down to its very soul, fusing the two <laughs> into an all-powerful being bent on mass destruction. Susie completely changes her tune and sends Kirby on his way to take down the godlike supercomputer given the soul of a broken man. And just wait. <laughs> Kirby gets in a big mech. Get in that fucking robot. To make itself stronger, Stardream attaches itself to the Access Arc, transforming the entire ship into a sentient planet. Ironically what enough, this fuck? also ends up completing Stardream, as underneath the steel plating of the Access Arc, it's revealed that the entire ship was actually a repurposed clockwork star, with Stardream what? being the f What in the fuck? And he still looks fucking terrifying! Where's the chibi version? Why are we gonna bring back the Final nightmare fuel? You know what it looks like? It looks like a Furby. It looks like a fucking fucked up Furby. Plus, hey, that mode aside, in Robobot's true arena, there's another fun little tidbit Hal decided to sneak in. Basically, in the final, final, final phase of the Stardream fight, when <laughs> Stardream sucks Kirby into its core, every time run. you destroy a piece of Stardream's internal mechanisms, you can actually hear a distorted version of Haltman screaming in pain, showing that while Stardream had erased most of his soul, fragments of it still remain, forever trapped within the malevolent Nova until someone destroys it for good. Though now... I want us to listen to that again. I want you to listen to what he just said. Every time you destroy a piece of Stardream's internal mechanisms, you can actually hear a distorted version of Haltman screaming in pain, showing that while Stardream had erased most of his soul, fragments of it still remain, forever trapped within the malevolent Nova until someone destroys it for good. Though What the fuck, dude? This shit's more fucked up than Nomura's crazy horse shit. Hear him screaming in horrid pain as you break the remaining sh remnants of his 
fucking soul. And with the entire galaxy once again being at stake, Kirby set out to take action. And this time, does he, he even wasn't know alone. what he? He says the entire universe is at stake. Does he really you know what's even happening? Does Kirby even know what the fuck is going on? I don't think he does. I think he's just like ah ah big thing. Me go eat now. Yeah. Yeah, Look, there he goes. Action, and this he time, he wasn't he's alone. Doing. You see, in terms of Kirby games, Star Allies has really. honestly become the Infinity War of the series, with friends and foes from past games all coming together to help Kirby save the What cup. in the... What in the hell is... Kirby, what is up? What are you... Are you holding those things? What is that? Are those your arms? My friends are my fucking back! And it's not like they're just shoved in to be in the game, as there's even explanations to some of the more unlikely allies coming to Kirby's aid. For Marx, as was shown in the True <laughs> Arena cut, more unlikely See, allies See, I like that version of Marx. Look at this little dumbass with fucking loaves of bread for feet. Mark, he did actually manage to survive his head-on collision with Nova, only instead of taking revenge like he did in I that, like that version. Mind. He changed himself for the better. For Dark Meta Knight, probably this. Is there a Dark Meta Knight color? I don't know if I remember that. Is that in Smash? I don't know if I remember a Dark Meta Knight color. This version, like the one we're showing here, this looks way better. This looks pretty cool. Team friend out of them all. There is. He's mainly oh. just interested in the dark powers of the Jamba Heart, probably due to its similarity with his lost master. For DeRoach, well, he just wants to steal the Jamba Hearts for himself, as he thinks they're ordinary jewels. For Taranza, sadly, he still hasn't been able to let go of Sectonia and believes that if he goes to the altar of the Divine Terminus, he'll be able to bring her back to life dude what the fuck why is it like so many characters are driven by the fucking death of like somebody they loved and they're like well i maybe if i gather all the fucking dragon balls i can get them back to life because that really works really well for everybody in this series and finally for Susie, following in her late father's footsteps she's begun to rebuild his company determined to continue his work of mechanizing entire planets wait huh she's continuing his work is that good or bad she's evil wait still evil i thought she was good i don't understand why is she bad i thought she was good she's the one that helped us try to stop him before why is she bad now huh i don't understand <laughs> what i thought she was good she's like she realized her dad was doing some stupid shit <laughs> I don't understand. Why did she stop him? Because she, what, he was, he, like, she just want him out of the way? Revenge? She just wants money? I thought she was good. I'm so sad now. I kind of liked her. I was like that, that, I was sort of invested in that plot line. Out of all these ones, that's the one I, like, understood the most and I became most invested in. And I was like, oh, that's cute. Susie became friends with Kirby and they stopped her dumb dad. And I thought, it was like, she took up the company and was going to make it for the better. No, fuck it. I'm going to continue what he's doing and fuck everybody. What? Determined to continue no! his work of mechanizing That's not supposed to go at all. So, okay, with the surface level stuff out of the way, let's get back to the main story. As that was Kirby surface liberated level? liberated countless individuals who'd been plagued by the Jamba Hearts fragments, he come across a massive D &D spaceship get ripped. that as once Kirby got to the Jambandra base, home to the three mage sisters and their master, it'd soon become pretty obvious what kind kind of being was sealed away within the Jamba heart. Though by far, aside from the absolutely massive amount of lore hidden in pause screens throughout the game, much like Haltman before him, <laughs> there's the guy with the, his name's Highness. Highness. The mastermind behind the release of the Jamba hearts <laughs> reveals an incredible amount of information <laughs> solely so through his quick conversation with Kirby. So for <laughs> the sake of you all, and so we don't jump around too much, let's start from the very beginning. As we already know, what? long ago, there it here we go we're going back again all right just so you know i don't confuse you i'm gonna go back to the but let's start this video all the way over here again highness long before his clan was betrayed and banished he was actually a very kind individual for instance when he used to travel freely across worlds he happened upon three girls one nearly freezing to death in a blizzard one burning alive in an inferno and one once upon a time a girl facing a raging inferno tilted her head to the sky and let loose a fire screen just before she lost consciousness a mysterious traveler appeared on locked her natural that is a burning alive what the fuck are you talking about and one being it on the verge of death poor climbed a tower desperate she'll be struck by lightning as she breathed her last 
A mysterious traveler appeared to lock her left shoulder. <laughs> Give me your power. Right after she attempted to take her own life by getting struck by lightning. In all Wait, what? Attempted to take her own life by getting struck. That seems, I think he's making that up. I think that's, where is he getting that from? She tried to take her own life by climbing a tower and getting struck by lightning. This just says she climbed a tower in desperation for something and got struck by lightning. Where's he like, I tried to die by that lightning. The Japanese version? What the fuck? You're telling me this is fucking translation or shit? In all three cases, Highness saved them at the same <laughs> time, unlocking their hidden... And just like that, Qbert came down and saved them all. Potential for certain types of magic. Though after being betrayed by the scientific ancients, his once kindly heart began to become consumed by hatred and obsession. It'd be at this point that the now insane Highness would form a religion based around dark matter, <laughs> believing that if he a and freed the- We should make a religion out of that. Being, and maybe conquer the world as well. He'd completely lost himself to the darkness within his heart, becoming the exact opposite of what he once was. Even Kubert. when it came to the three sisters, he he saved like eons ago, Highness in his insane state only saw them as tools to be used, becoming abusive towards them at times. Even once <laughs> Highness was fuck defeated, he became so boost. obsessed with the revival of his Dark Lord I that he sacrificed more up not as we go only along the here. three sisters to it, but himself, fueling the complete revival what? of Vice to not only the three sisters to it, but himself, fueling the complete revival of Void Termina. Void Termina appears to be a what massive hulking. He sacrifices the three daughters and he sacrifices himself commits sudoku onto this shit Clearly there's something more to the uh, than meets the eye but Just it's not important because we're yeah, 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 cool boss, yeah, yeah. Beast, importantly there's void termina's fourth phase where it straight up pulls an earthbound and copies kirby's face what does this uh -oh. mean well we'll get there <laughs> What does this mean? Fuck if I know. Remember how in the Dark Matter trilogy, Zero's only real weakness was the power of positive emotions? Well, it turns out that was a lot more important than we ever realized because in this pause screen right here, it's revealed that depending on the type of energy that's gathered, Dark Matter will not always necessarily be- Oh, I see. This is, this is where- This was actually a lot more recent where they're like- here is the dankest of lore, the origins of Kirby, where he may come back as a friend. Friend! They said the thing! After Void Termina was defeated, Highness would fall into a dimensional rift, absorbing all the dark energy Void left behind, and in case- This motherfucker's not dead?! Once Kirby releases him and defeats him in his corrupted state, the three mage sisters, who've also been corrupted, challenge ah. Kirby as well, leading to him both defeating them again and purifying them with a friend heart. What the fuck was that? But what is that? Where did that even come from? Defeating them again <laughs> and purifying them yeah, with a friend dead. heart. Finally resolving the hatred that had plagued them for so long. In a completion picture for the mode, it seems like even Highness has finally begun returning to his old ways. How do you know that's good though? You see his silhouette there. He could be like getting ready to murder them. Relaxing with the three the sisters on a beach. But wait just a second, since while Highness seems to have finally found peace within himself, there's one more looming entity I haven't touched on. If you thought the lore around Void Termina was convoluted, then oh boy, you haven't seen anything yet. So okay, in Star Allies, there's a what if mode called Guest Star Allies, where it depicts what would happen if one of Kirby's friends confronted Highness instead of Kirby himself. And like always, it's only the finale itself that really has any noticeable changes, since instead of fighting- <laughs> This fucko shows up again, he's like, hey, what's up? I'm in every what if scenario. Do I actually exist? I don't know. A familiar butterfly lands on the tip of his sword, completely absorbing Galactonite's immense power and creating Morphonite, a mysterious warrior whose design actually originated from the cancelled Kirby GameCube game. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> is there this warrior whose design actually originated from the cancelled Kirby game? They're like, we're waiting all these years for this moment. <laughs> this game never made to fruition, but it's okay. This drip is gonna see the light of day at some point. Here you go. So as cool and completely random as Morpho Knight is, let's touch on that butterfly for a second, because I'm not joking when I say it's literally been with Kirby all along. While the specific orange one has only appeared in every main mainline game since Return to Dreamland, Butterfly's 
in general have been appearing alongside Kirby ever since the very first game, meaning a being capable of absorbing the actual strongest warrior in the galaxy has been with us this whole time. Now we all right, I think I'm done. <laughs> Never mind, I'm not playing this game anymore. I give up. Ah, that's enough for me. Ah, see you guys later. Bye. Sorry, I had to go cool off. It's getting a little. That lore was getting a little too heavy for me, man. This whole time, it was all the butterfly was with us in these random cutscenes. I know what you're saying. What in the actual hell is even happening? No, 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 not hell, little mog friend. What in the actual fruity fuck? As of now, Morpho Knight and the nature of the butterfly are mostly shrouded in mystery, with the only real information about them being the fact that the butterfly is a supposed being of paradise and that Morpho Knight is associated <laughs> with a... <laughs> Look at this motherfucker. It'd be funny if his bio is like, this is a canceled concept from a character that we were playing to have show up, but we decided whatever. We got tired of making new shit, so here's this recycled fuck. Morpho Knight is basically the equivalent of Bizarro Sephiroth. <laughs> That's what this is. He's just Bizarro Sephiroth. They're like, the fuck is that? That's about it. Or at least it is for now. Go subscribe to this human being. That was definitely in a journey.